In today's video, I'll demonstrate how you can install Kali Linux 2021.2 on VMware Workstation Pro. In order to set up Kali 2021.2, you'll need to navigate to the URL which you can see here. I've left this link underneath the video. Now, today I'm going to be setting up the Kali Linux image and I'm going to be using the weekly 64-bit image. So I have downloaded this ahead of this video and this is now downloaded to my documents folder. Now, if you're using Apple M1 or if you have a 32-bit architecture on your computer, obviously you're going to need to change these different options, but it should automatically recognize the architecture that you are using. Now, in order to get started, uh, I'm going to go over to my virtual machines folder and I have called this Kali Linux backup version as I've already configured this previously. So I'm going to set up a backup version of my Kali Linux. I'm going to be using that 64 bit weekly image. So I'm going to go across to VMware. And in order to set up my new image, I'm going to go on to file and then new virtual machine. Select next and then I'm going to choose where my image is. I would recommend that you don't have this in your downloads folder. If you're like me, I commonly clear out my downloads folder and I end up deleting my ISO images, which can be really, really frustrating. And then once you've chosen your image, you will need to choose the operating system which you are using. Now for the next part of this, uh, I'm going to choose on Linux and I'm going to leave my version as Debian 664 bit. You can also do the same thing when you're setting up your Kali Linux ISO image. I'm going to select on next here and I'm going to rename this as Kali Linux backup. And this is an ISO image. Okay. Now that I have done this, I'm going to select on next again and I'm going to allocate it around a hundred gigabytes. Okay. 20 is just not sufficient. I'm going to select on next. And in this section here, you should change your network settings. So it's using uh, an IP address separate from your Windows or your Mac machine. So I'm using an Asus, Asus ROG Flow X13 laptop for hacking. Um, you should set this into bridge mode. So if you're in Windows, this is going to be your option here. And this will make sure you don't have an IP conflict and that had is being assigned its own IP address on the setup. Then I'm going to select on finish. And then hopefully this image will now be able to boot. So I'm going to select on power on this virtual machine. And then it's going to take us into the setup of Kali. So do we want to install a graphic install? We're going to go for the standard option here. I'm going to select on enter. And then we are going to be taken through a series of different options here. So we're going to wait for it to go to the next screen and then choose the language which you want to use on Kali Linux. So I'm going to select on continue for English. I'm going to use a United States keyboard. I'm going to leave it as American English and then it's going to run through the next couple of setup options. Now this is going to take around 30 minutes depending on the computer that you're using. So I will pause this video and come back to Okay, so when you get to this section here, you're going to need to give your device a host name. You can leave it as Kali to begin with. I wouldn't change any of the settings here. And then it says domain name. You should leave domain name blank. When I've given it a domain name previously, it has errored. So as I said, I would recommend you leave it as blank. Just press on continue. And then it's going to start configuring the network. Now, it's going to ask you what you want the user to be. So I'm just going to set mine up as Kali and also Kali to begin with. So you can leave this as Kali. And then it's going to say a password. So I'm going to set a nice secure password for this machine and select on continue again. It's going to ask me the time zone. So I'm going to leave myself in Eastern and we can change this in the machine later anyway. And then it's going to move on to detecting hard disk here. On this section, you should choose guided use entire disk and then select on continue if you see the same option as me. Then select all files in one partition and then finish partitioning and write changes to disk. 
on this section you're going to say yes you want to make changes to the disk you want to write these changes and then this next part is going to take around 30 minutes when you get to this screen here you can just press on continue when you get to this section you will need to select yes install the grub boot loader and then on this section here you'll need to choose slash dev slash sda or a similar option if you have a different option to me in Kali Linux or VMware. When you get to this section you'll be able to see that the installation has now finished so you can now select on continue and hopefully fingers crossed your Kali Linux will now be set up on VMware. Now you're going to be logging in using your Kali username and then the default password which you have set up and now we're on this screen here I'm going to enter Kali and then my nice secure password and select login. Now I've already set this in bridge mode, you should have set this up in bridge mode as well, which means it would have been assigned its own IP address. Now in the next part of this video, I'm gonna be showing you another couple of things, so different key commands that you should know in Kali and also how to update Kali Linux. Now that you are booting up in Kali Linux, one of the first things that you are gonna to wanna to do is move from your standard Kali account to your root account, as you're not going to have many privileges as a standard Kali user. In order to do, to do this, type in Kali and then sudo suit. And now that you've done this, in order to change the password of your root account, type in pass wd and then root and set your new password. Now that you've done this, you're gonna to need to log out and then log back in as root. Now, you can change the privileges of your Kali account or you can set up a new user. I generally just use my root account. I'm using this on VMware. If I do corrupt my Kali image, I can just then obviously reinstall. And you can see on the left at the moment, I've got my Kali ISO as well as my backup, which I've just installed. Now, if I open up terminal again, you'll be able to see I'm logged in as root at Kali. So a couple of key commands for you. Uh, you don't need sudo anymore, so you could, you'd be able to type in at an update to make sure your system is up to date. Generally, this is a command you should be using every day or every time that you log on to Kali. And once this is updated, the next command you're gonna want to run is at an upgrade. Now, you'll be able to see there are 54 packages to be upgraded, so we're gonna do at an upgrade now. And fingers crossed, we'll be able to run a full upgrade. And then our Kali Linux will be updated to the latest version. Once Kali Linux has finished upgrading, you'll be able to see a screen which looks similar to this. The last thing we're gonna look at is how can you find your IP address. On Kali Linux terminal, if you type in ifconfig, this will allow you to find the IP address which has been assigned to your Kali machine once you have set it up in bridge mode. Do keep an eye out for other videos we're posting on Kali Linux and ethical hacking and check out our next video on how to hack a Windows 10 webcam. And I look forward to seeing you in our next video soon.